Using some walnut offcuts left over from the kitchen island I made recently, I'm going to make a serving board slash cutting board with a few twists. I planed these offcuts a while back, but as you can see, they've got a bit of cupping, so it's over to the joiner for a few passes to flatten them up. I'm going to make the form for the epoxy pours from some half inch plywood I had laying around the shop. And speaking of the shop, you may notice things look a little bit different. I just got moved into this new workshop and I'm loving all the extra space. That said, I'm now without an outfeed table, but that will be a project for another day. I'm cutting everything to fit into this 14 by 24 inch form. And the finished piece will be shaped a bit different as you'll see in a later step. Now I can cut the walnut slabs on the miter saw to fit down into that form. I'll assemble the form with some pocket screws and I've had really good results building my forms this way lately. The pocket screws hold the form together tight enough where I'm not getting any epoxy leaking out which always makes for a bad day. I'll cover the form with this red stuff called tuck tape. Now, tuck tape is just a brand name. It's actually called sheathing tape, and I'll have a link for the red stuff I use down below as well as everything else used in this build. I built the form to give the pieces a tight friction fit. Now this helps keep your pieces from floating up and the epoxy getting underneath, which can create a big mess and be quite the task to sand down. Trust me on this, I've had to learn the hard way. Moving on to the epoxy pours, I'm using Total Boat's 2 to 1 high performance epoxy with Slow Hardener. Now my last few projects I've used thick set epoxy which is fantastic because you can pour deeper but the trade off is I can get a project like this done much faster because I can re-pour every hour instead of waiting a few days for everything to cure. I added some white pigment and some white pearl powder and got started pouring the epoxy into the form. With the last pour done, I made sure to swirl the epoxy and I came back with some black tinted epoxy to fill any cracks or voids that were left over. The next day after getting the board out of the form, I had to fill a few remaining voids and some cracks that still needed filling. Now once that it all cured, I ran it through my planer to shave down the excess epoxy and flatten the board with that final thickness being about an inch and 5 eighths. One of the downsides of moving into this new shop is it's taking a while to get my internet hooked up. So luckily my friend Joe of Last Lake Woodworks was kind enough to let me come over to his shop and borrow his machine to cut out the design to hold these drink glasses, the cheeses, and whatever else you throw on the cheese board. I created a file of the cutouts in SketchUp and then imported the SVG file into Inventables free software Easel. Now this software is simple and intuitive to use and trust me if I can figure it out, I'm guessing you can too. Next comes the best part, I just get mesmerized watching this machine carve.
Once the machine had cut out all the pockets, I had it cut out the shape of the serving board, which has recesses on each end for handles that I'll add in a later step. The bit wasn't long enough to cut all the way through the material, so once it was done carving, I brought the board back to my shop where I could cut away the bulk of the excess on my bandsaw. To cut out the handles, I first drilled a hole and then used my jigsaw to cut the rest of the way, taking my time and being careful not to cut too close to the edge. In my never ending journey to use my tools for their not intended purpose, I brought the board over to my Ameribrade belt grinder, which is normally used for knife making. That said, this was a great tool to sand away a bunch of the excess left over after cutting the board out. I didn't want to run the risk of having a section chip out when I flush trim the edges with my router, so the less material to remove, the better. Here I still had some epoxy to address on top of the board and I filled those with more black tinted epoxy. I sanded down the excess epoxy and next moved to drilling the holes for the handles. To prevent any potential tear out while drilling, I used the offcuts from the handle, a couple of spacers, and then wrapped blue tape around the edges so it would fit back into those cutouts. I started laying out the placement for the handles, making sure they were far enough inset so there was plenty of material left on the edges. Next, I began transferring those marks over to the sides so I could ensure those holes would line up. I'm using my self-centering dowel jig to get these holes started, and this one lets me start by drilling a quarter inch hole and then working my way all the way up to drilling out a half inch hole. After that, I still needed to drill out the holes to match the 5 8 inch outside diameter of the copper pipe I'm using for the handles. I taped on a guide block and drilled about a half inch deep with a spade bit before finishing the rest in the drill press. And here you can see what happened when I did a little off camera testing drilling with a 5 8 inch drill bit. I had a ton of tear out and I'll need to address that in a later step. Like I said, I used the drill press to drill the hole the rest of the way through with that spade bit. So I got this length of 5 8 inch copper pipe from Joe when I was out of the shop and I thought it was perfect for the handles on this piece. I wanted to leave the ends exposed and then fill the copper pipe with some epoxy. I measured the amount of pipe I needed for the handles and cut this over on my porta band. Again using the belt grinder I threw on a finishing belt to clean up the outside of the copper pipes. Then I used the belt grinder to sand down this 5 8 inch dowel to fit inside that copper pipe. This gives me a way to only have to fill the ends of the pipe with epoxy instead of trying to fill the whole length of pipe. After securing the board upright, I inserted the copper handles and hammered the dowel plugs into place. I 
added some hot glue to seal the ends and prevent the epoxy from leaking further down into the pipe. Using a router with a 45 degree bit, I gave the edge a light chamfer on the top and bottom. Next, I mix up some of this Total Boat 5 minute epoxy and this is what I'll use to attach the handles on each end. I still had to address the tear out from the drill bit, so I added some wood glue to this walnut sawdust and mixed that up into a paste. This is gonna fill those voids, but unfortunately it's not gonna completely hide the tear out that I had. I sanded the whole board up to a 220 grit and used micro mesh sanding pads to shine up the copper handles. Here I taped off the area around the handles and I'll use this spray lacquer to finish the handles and a couple coats should keep them looking nice and shiny. Okay, the last step is to add some food grade mineral oil to finish the piece and man, I love watching that grain pop. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I've got another video I think you'll really enjoy queued up right here and here. Also, I've got a whole list of cool projects coming up on this channel, so make sure you get subscribed by clicking down here. And as always, if you watch to the end, comment this. Thanks for checking this one out, and I'll see you back here next time.